Thank you. And the final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 362 in the name of Douglas Ross on the Scottish team at Euro 2016. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, so would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Douglas Ross to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Ross. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And after the turbulent uh, events since Thursday uh, and the debate we held in Parliament earlier today, often members' business is an opportunity to discuss something totally different. Uh, my motion is about Scotland and it's about Europe. So apologies uh, about that, but I don't think we need to repeat some of the arguments we had earlier on. Uh, could I also begin by referring members to my register of members' interests as a football referee with the Scottish FA and thank everyone who supported my motion and have stayed behind to discuss it tonight. Every football fan supports a domestic team and that's understandable and there are often arguments about why you support a certain team and who you support. But when it comes to your national team, you're born with it. There is no choice. And we as Scots follow the Scottish national team through their highs and their lows. But I struggle sometimes to think that the last time I supported a Scottish national team at a major finals, I was still at school. I was watching France 98 while I was in school, eh, and I looked forward to the next major tournament, the next World Cup, the next European Championship, so I could continue my support for our national team. But that never came. So we can lament about the fact that the national team haven't qualified since 1998, and we can put our faith in those who are involved with the Scottish national team that that wait will not last too much longer. But I do want to give the Parliament an opportunity to congratulate a Scottish team who did qualify for the Euros. In this rather surreal week, it is strange, but I think quite nice as well, that I become the first member to lead a debate on refereeing in the Scottish Parliament since it was established in 1999. And there's a saying that if a referee goes about unnoticed, they've done a good job. But I also think when they have done a good job, they should also be noticed and recognised. And that's why I'm very proud to put forward this motion, recognising the significant achievements of Willie Collum and his team. So just as teams have to qualify for great tournaments, so do referees. They don't just get selected uh, to go out there. And it's only because of consistent, high-quality performances by Willie, his assistant from Ireland, Damien McGrath, and his fellow Scottish officials, Frankie Connor, Bobby Madden, and John Beaton, that they were able to fly out to France and be one of only 18 teams to be entrusted to referee the second biggest football tournament in the world. And it's a very strong pedigree that Willie has to do that. A referee with over 150 international appointments to his credit. 150. If he was a player, we would be shouting from the rooftops. But because he's a referee, we just ignore it. <laughs> but because we have a referee in Parliament now, there will be no more ignoring of things like that. And the selection process has been a long time in coming. William has had top appointments with his team throughout Europe this year, entrusted with high-profile Champions League, Europa League and Euro qualifiers. And as I say in my motion, at the start of this season, he was entrusted with the Super Cup final between Barcelona and Seville, the winners of the Champions League and the Europa League. But William will also be the first to admit that his season is not unblemished. There have been mistakes. He has made mistakes, I've made mistakes, every referee in Scotland has made mistakes this season. But we only improve because we learn from our mistakes. But we shouldn't always just think it's only the referees who make mistakes. Sometimes, and I'm not mentioning anything in particular, but the goalkeeper makes mistakes. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad my colleague Adam Tompkins has maybe left because that could be slightly hard for him to hear after last night's result. But everyone does make mistakes, but it is to William's credit and indeed Scottish refereeing's credit, I think, that we learn from it with the support of our National Association and John Fleming and the referee department and at UEFA level with the expert guidance that he and his colleagues have got from Hugh Dallas, from Perluigi Colina, from Mark Bata and others in the UEFA referee committee. So William and his team officiated at two games in the European Championships and they were no ordinary games. He uh, refereed the Czech Republic v Turkey, a very tough match uh, and a crucial match, but his first appointment was even more special. He refereed France v Albania and anyone who knows anything about football will recognise if you are given the home nation 
in an international tournament, that is a big feather in your cap. And the fact that William came through it with no one talk talking about the refereeing team shows how well he performed in front of the world eyes. Uh, and it's a great credit to him. So it's a personal achievement for William, for Frankie, for Bobby, for John and for Damien. And I also think they'd like me to mention it's a significant investment in their own time and their family's time. We only do what we do in refereeing because of the strong support of our families. So I know the pride that the guys will have taken from their appointment will be shared by their families. So the Parliament should recognise this and welcome the inspiration that their involvement in the Euros could give to new referees coming through. And that moves on to my second point of my motion. Whatever you think about referees, you need them. Whatever uh, <laughs> you think for your own team's perspective or otherwise, there is no game without them. And everyone gets into refereeing for different reasons. I myself got into refereeing because of a di distinct lack of ability eh, as a, a player. And I used to joke I was so bad I couldn't even get into a pub team. I've now changed that a bit. I'm so bad I can't even get into the parliament team. A parliament team that Brian Whittle can get into, that Finlay Carson can get into, that the presiding officer can get into, Mark Griffin and others, eh, but I was not good enough for it. So I was left to, to referee and I was happy to referee the recent match between MSPs and the RAF. But as I say, there are so many different reasons for people to get into refereeing, but I could never have thought when I started over a decade ago that I would go on to referee eh, and officiate at some of the top games around the world and around Europe, to do a League Cup final, a Scottish Cup final, an Old Firm match, and to be part of William's team as a standby assistant to go to the Euros, eh, had anything happened to his two assistant referees. So there are great opportunities, and we must use this as an opportunity to encourage young or old ex-footballers to take up refereeing, and of course women we have a, a significant push to get more female referees in Scotland. A lot of work has been done. People like Morag Perry and Lorraine Clark have done a great job in highlighting the game to ensure that we get more and more females coming into it. Now, this may be the first and only time we ever discuss refereeing in this chamber, but I did think it was right that we recognise the achievement of Willie and his team. And if their performances on an international stage representing Scotland at a flagship European football event this summer encourages just one person to take up the whistle, just one person to get involved, then they will have been as successful off the pitch as they have been on it. For all we know, in one of our communities, somewhere in Scotland, a future Euro referee final, a World Cup final referee may have been watching and because of their performances took inspiration from Willie and his team to get involved. Your local referee associations across Scotland will be delighted to hear from any constituents who have watched this tournament, who have heard about a Scottish official being at a tournament our Scottish team couldn't qualify for, and they will take inspiration from that. They will look at the opportunities available to them locally, nationally and internationally. They're all there to be taking, and I hope we get more and more people involved in what is a great uh, tradition in Scottish football. Thank you. I call on Lewis MacDonald. Thank you very much, and uh, can I, too, can I uh, start by congratulating Douglas Ross on bringing this debate, and also thank Willie Collum and his team for ensuring uh, that Scotland did not miss out on Euro 2016. Of course, it would be good to have our own football team there as well, rather than relying on our near neighbours to give us an interest in the outcome of matches, but sadly on this occasion, a bad night out in Georgia meant that that was not possible. However, now that the tournament has reached the quarter-final stage, I'm sure we will all have teams that we want to wish well, and a number, I'm sure, will occur to colleagues around the chamber. I particularly want, as a, an Aberdeen supporter, to mention Wales and to wish the best of luck to Wales. I particularly hope we will see more of Simon Church and Danny Ward, once a don, always a don, uh, when Wales take on their next challenge and beyond. But, of course, it's great that Scottish match officials have been selected to take part, and it is a reflection of the standing of Scottish refereeing that our officials are consistently involved uh, in major tournaments, even if our teams sadly are not. But not, of course, that football fans will ever admit in the heat of the game that our match officials really do uh, achieve such high standards. I have already shared with Douglas Ross my subjective assessment of his last visit to Pretodri, although, of course, the fact that Aberdeen lost heavily to Ross County at the end of the last season uh, in no way coloured my view of the assistant referee's performance, no matter the coincidence of the surname uh, or the fact that he had just been elected as a Highlands and Islands MSP. But I am glad that our refereeing team did indeed do so well at Euro 2016, and I am sure that they at least will be invited back. Mr Ross also rightly highlights the importance of local and grassroots football, which needs not only pitches and coaches, 
but also referees and assistance if it is to continue to happen. And in my own area, Aberdeen and District Referees Association is typical of many others in relying on the voluntary efforts of men and women who come forward to be our referees and assistants. And the challenge for Sandy Roy at the Aberdeen As uh, Association and his colleagues is to find those volunteers. They run three training courses every year and they work very hard in local schools to encourage young people to take re up refereeing. But of course, for young people, uh, the attractions of playing the game uh, always uh, up there uh, in lights. But of course, the, the, those games can only happen uh, if the referees are there as well. And I'm delighted that there are some uh, young players who have chosen, uh, whose skills have been perhaps greater than Mr Ross is admitting to this evening, uh, but who have chosen and made a positive choice uh, to take up refereeing, even quite early uh, in their 20s, because they see uh, that that's something that will be with them uh, uh, for, for many years. The other area, I think, which Aberdeen and District Refereeing Association has, has highlighted is the recruitment of women. And again, it's good to see in the professional game now, women officiating at the highest level. Uh, we need to see more of that in order to provide that role model for young women uh, who may, at a local and grassroots level, also choose uh, to become uh, involved in uh, the game. Uh, so I think uh, having seen uh, what referees can do at a local and a national level, I hope that we will get uh, even more uh, input in the future. And without those uh, inputs from volunteers, we would not be able to have uh, the number of games that are held every year. I too have had my moments on the pitch, not as a referee, but as a player in the Sunday League. And therefore, my experience of disputing matters with referees uh, goes back quite a long way. Uh, like Mr Ross, I um, was a failure in my efforts to uh, enter the Parliament team. That was some years ago, it must be said. Uh, but I know uh, that uh, at this level, as at every other, it is the willingness of people to come forward and volunteer to be officials that allows everyone else to enjoy the opportunities to play the game. I call Alison Johnson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to congratulate Douglas Ross for securing time in the Chamber this evening to discuss this important topic. Um, I would, however, like to commiserate with him and with Lewis MacDonald for their inability as yet to secure a place on the Parliament's football team. I wonder what criteria has applied. And I'd like to see more of an inclusive approach because I believe in sport for all. Anyway, as has been highlighted in this debate, referees do give an incredible commitment to the sport they love. They often take on the responsibility, as you will know, of maintaining calm in a volatile situation where passions on the pitch and in the stands can run high and all the while know that they're likely to end up facing the fury of at least some supporters. And as we've heard, while Scotland's men's football team missed out again on the prestigious events that so many people are desperate to attend, it is truly a tremendous achievement for the team of Scottish officials to have been selected to represent the country at Euro 2016. And it clearly says much about how European football authorities view the standards of officiating in Scotland. And I too would like to pass on my congratulations to the team. Um, in uh, preparing for the debate, I was really pleased to learn about the SQA Referee Development Award that provides an opportunity for secondary school pupils to get involved in refereeing. It's been in operation since 2011. It's had the involvement of 30 schools across Scotland last year and nearly 500 candidates. And as well as being an important educational scheme, it too widens access for women and girls and those from more disadvantaged backgrounds. And the award initially subsidized by the Scottish FA with no cost to schools is described as being a core part of the Scottish FA Referee Development Department strategy for encouraging and increasing participation in football refereeing. And it's really encouraging to see a serious grassroots approach to developing our young people. Now, we all know that a sport improves our mental and physical health, it can improve our quality of life and potentially our life expectancy. It can be a tool for NHS prescribing. We're seeing more and more GPs prescribing leisure activities. And uh, Sport Scotland tell us that a 1% increase in physical activity rates can save the NHS some three and a half million pounds a year and reduce admissions for coronary heart disease, stroke and colon cancer. 
And obviously, a lot of people prefer, uh, some people don't want to get involved in competitive sport, but many of us do. And if we want to compete in those situations, it's absolutely essential that we have referees and officials. I think very often in sport, coaches are overlooked, but I would say that officials are even more greatly overlooked. We forget about what a job they do quietly on the sidelines, sometimes in absolutely appalling weather. Um, I'd probably like to take this opportunity here to make special mention of uh, someone who I know, Barry, um, Barry Craighead. I'm sure Brian Whittle will know him. He is one of the best known, most liked, most respected figures in Scottish athletics. He's a starter. And, you know, he began to, to start races in New Haven in the city at track there. And he has gone on to start races at the Olympic Games. You know, he has started local, Scottish, British, European, Commonwealth and Olympic events. And he really is, uh, you know, just such a great demonstration of the kind of people who day in, day out, make it possible for others to compete in the sports they love. And it takes time, it takes commitment, it takes finance. Um, and it takes a real sense of duty and discipline. So I'm just pleased that we've had this opportunity this evening to thank all of those who make it possible for us to participate um, and to play within the laws of a game. And I appreciate that refereeing maybe isn't always for the faint-hearted, but I'd just like to put on record my support for all those who do spend their time in such a positive way. Thank you. The last of our open speakers is Brian Whittle. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, I am delighted to support the motion on behalf of my colleague and UEFA referee, Douglas Ross, especially as he decided not to send me off in the recent parliamentary football match against the RAF for endeavouring to explain the offside rule to him. Apparently, he is fully aware of the complexities of this rule and did, in fact, did not need my input. Deputy Presiding Officer, I was yards on side. <laughs> Um, what I will say is my, my football career was uh, tragically cut short through a severe lack of talent. Um, however, putting that aside uh, for the moment, it does give me the opportunity to highlight the steady stream of world-class football referees and coaches that Scotland has produced consistently for decades. The Sports Scotland Inverclyde Sports Facility in Largs in Ayrshire is a mecca for coach and referee education, attracting people from around Europe, and we are without doubt a world leader in this department. Take the case in point with four Scottish referees attending and excelling at the current European Championships. In a wider context, this motion allows me to recognise the incredible contribution that referees, coaches, administrators, officials and medical staff, both professional and voluntary, give to our communities, allowing millions to participate in the sports that we love. These people are often taken for granted, or in my colleague's case, abused by self-centred, opinionated, has-been, know-it-alls, forgetting that these people are the enablers and the facilitators for all of our Scottish sport. In my own sport of track and field, there are an army of coaches and officials that turn up week in, week out in all weathers to ensure our athletes get the opportunity to compete from local league matches to international competitions. This, of course, is replicated across the country in every sport, and I would encourage every parent or young, of young competitors and every participant to recognise this and remember to respect and thank these people at every opportunity. You see, these people have made a decision to give up their time to train and qualify in their chosen discipline, often over a number of years at their own expense. It takes a serious level of commitment and self-betterment, uh, sorry, it takes a serious level of commitment and discipline to achieve these qualifications and that continuing thirst for knowledge and drive for self-betterment is the reason behind any individual or team success. Behind every podium finish, there are unsung heroes happy to take their place behind the scenes, allowing the sportsmen and women to take their place in the spotlight. Take, for example, uh, the Olympic uh, track and field trials last weekend. Not since 1972 have so many Scottish athletes made the plane to an Olympics. 12 Scottish athletes will achieve the pinnacle of their sport by pulling on their country's colours in the biggest and greatest sports event in the world. This is no accident. Sports Scotland, Scottish athletics, personal coaches, clubs and medical sport have been planning meticulously for this for years. Deputy Presiding Officer, with this motion has allowed me to demonstrate is the wide variety of opportunities available in Scottish sport 
and the importance of the, sport, the support network required to keep our sports ticking. Not only can we participate in sport, but we can coach or referee. We can be administrators and officials. And failing that, we can be taxi drivers, or as they are sometimes called, parents. Deputy Presiding Officer, we wholeheartedly applaud the contribution of our referees are currently making at the highest level out in France and wish them ever more success. We also recognise the incredible contribution they and their colleagues make day after day, often unheralded in our communities, and I would encourage us all not only to recognise that contribution, but to make sure they always know how much we appreciate their dedication. I now call on Aileen Campbell to close the debate. Uh, Minister, around seven minutes. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, I'm pleased to respond to this motion on behalf of the Scottish Government and, like others, congratulate Douglas Ross in securing this debate and uh, for, I want to mention, his clear passion to shout loudly for our referees. Douglas also spoke, though, about his refereeing route uh, being through a lack of ability on the pitch. For me, at university, I played for our university football team. This wasn't because of any ability I had. I think, uh, looking back now, presiding officer, it was because I was the only one that could drive the team bus. Uh, so I'm clearly adding to our collective sense of failure of football uh, across the party divide. Um, like all football fans, I've been enjoying the 2016 European Championships in France, and it's been a great tournament so far. Lots of skill, excitement and goals, as well as a few surprises. The newly expanded format, I think, has been really positive, particularly for smaller nations, and the latter stages are sh shaping up uh, nicely. However, like all Scotland fans, and as Lewis MacDonald says, my enjoyment has also been tempered by the fact that Scotland isn't there. It is, though, nice to see our British neighbours at the big football party, and I've enjoyed immensely their contribution and wish Wales all the very best as the last uh, home nation left in the tournament. But we all know, though, that it's not, just, it's not the same without Scotland. I know our fans, the famous Tartan Army, would have been welcomed with open arms by the French, their good nature and impeccable behaviour always a credit to Scotland. And likewise, I'm sure that Gordon Strachan, Stuart Reagan, and everyone at the Scottish FA would have also been determined to make as positive an impact on the field too. It's been too long, approaching 20 years since our last appearance at an international tournament. And like Douglas, I was also at school for our last uh, tournament uh, which we qualified for. So very much hope and want my son to experience a tournament with Scotland in it sometime soon. May I stop you there, Minister? Oh. Uh, can you move your microphone Sorry. up? Sorry. <laughs> Apologise. Uh, on the horizon, however, there are some positives as uh, Hampden Park will be hosting the European Championship fixtures in 2020 and I'm sure everyone across the chamber will join me in wishing Scotland every success in reaching that tournament and indeed the 2018 World Cup in Russia before then. This motion uh, placed before us by Douglas Ross though recognises that despite our disappointment at not being at the Euros, Scotland has been excellently represented in France. And I know Doug Ross has first-hand experience of this as the qualified referee that he mentioned, who has officiated in the Premiership, internationals, and even at the 2015 Scottish Cup final. Just missing out by a year on that glorious spectacle of seeing St Johnston lift the cup for the very first time in their uh, history. Um, however, I have no doubt that the skill that he deploys on match days will occasionally come in handy in this chamber as well. Now, Scottish referees were selected uh, by UEFA as one of the 18 teams of match officials. As Alison Johnson said, that is a great credit to their expertise and their experience, as well as the work of the Scottish FA to support them and developing the next generation of top class referees. So our top referee, Willie Collum, has been in the middle, along with his fellow Scots, Frankie Connor, Bobby McMadden, and John Beaton, and assistant Damien McGrath, from the Republic of Ireland. William re refereed the France versus Albania game. As Douglas noted, that was very special indeed to have been awarded the nation's home game. And then, of course, he officiated at the Turkey versus the Czech Republic matches. He and his team have performed excellently. And like Douglas, the highest praise that I can offer is that the discussion afterwards was all about the football and not about any refereeing decisions. And it does cap a fine season for Willie Collum, uh, who took charge of the UEFA Super Cup final between Barcelona and Sevilla last year. It is really pleasing, though, to see Scots excelling at international tournament. And I agree with uh, the member that this highlights the opportunities 
available to current and potential match officials. We have almost 3,400 registered referees in Scotland. Almost 2,500 of them are active, a remarkable number, but I know the Scottish FWA is always looking to identify and develop more to come into the system. And it's a regrettable, though, that referees don't always receive the best press, but there is no doubt it is a hugely rewarding role. And Willie Collum and his team underlined the huge opportunities for Scottish officials to make their mark at the very highest level, as they have done for many years. Because refereeing is a phenomenally great opportunity to play a positive role within your sport. Through dedication, through hard work and commitment, the pathway is available to everyone to reach the elite level aided by positive role models such as Willie Collum. Other benefits of officiating in the sport include developing leadership, communication and management skills as well. Refereeing is also though a fantastic way to lead a healthy lifestyle through the benefits of regular physical activity coupled with a balanced diet to assist preparation for athletic performance. And having more referees at all levels allows for more participation in sport for our children and the wider benefit of sport in their physical and mental development. Now, it can be difficult for young referees to overcome the negativity of parents, players and coaches who challenge inexperienced referees who are de still developing and honing their skills. Likewise, though, it is always good to see young talent coming through uh, at all levels. And I was uh, impressed by what I saw when I watched Fourth Wanderers in my constituency uh, who um, took forward that game, who was part of that game, officiated really well at a game just ahead of Fourth Wanderers, clinching the Central League Two this season and uh, getting and gaining a well-earned promotion. Ref referees, though, as others have noted, are important for our enjoyment of the game and it's important that we educate all parties to be more understanding of each other's roles within sport and support them in a positive manner to improve performances and enjoyment of sport for all involved. That's not to say decisions will always go our way, of course, passions run high when you watch your team, but tolerance, respect and openness must prevail and that's a point I think well made by Brian Whittle. The work done by Scottish FA to develop our referees and identify and develop the next generation is welcome. And as Alison Johnson mentioned, the SQA Referee Personal Development Award supported through funding from Specsavers and the government's cashback programme goes from strength to strength. And last year, the Scottish Centre of Refereeing Excellence was launched, providing a pathway for up and coming referees to reach their upper echelons of the game. And the good work is just one of the reasons Scotland is punching above its weight. Scotland has two elite referees, Craig Thompson and Willie Collum, the same or more than significantly bigger nations like England, France, Germany and Turkey. It is a stunning achievement for a nation of our size. But it's not just the men who can be referees. And as Lewis MacDonald spoke in his remarks, women like football too. And women's football is growing and we should do also all we can to encourage women and girls to think about the opportunities to pursue refereeing. We all already have many uh, female uh, referees and we also have several female elite and international referees. So these women should be held up as role models for girls who enjoy the beautiful game. So to conclude, Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government supports the motion and applauds the dedicated and talented referees at the European Championships from Scotland. We recognise their strong performance today and support the work of the SFA to develop the next generation of referees and again put on record our thanks to Douglas Ross for bringing forward this debate. Thank you, Minister. And I close this meeting.